Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Actually, where is Corey? Corey should be the one up here preaching. I understand that one of her last things that she had to do for seminary was that she had to do a whole sermon series, and she did it on Romans, so you might be hearing Romans a little more as the summer goes on. So I'm going to be dealing this morning with Romans 5, as Kathleen has already read to you. This is an eloquent and powerful letter put forth, Paul's understanding how it is that God has acted for the salvation of the world through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, Romans is key to Paul, and it's key to understanding his theology, and it's key to understanding how he sees that Jesus Christ reveals to us God's love. Paul begins this chapter 5 with this bold statement, Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. For centuries, the church has tried to understand and comprehend and espouse its understanding of salvation. Are we saved because we adhere to the law? Or are we saved because of our good works? Justification by grace through faith addresses the role of human beings, the role that they play in salvation and the role that God plays in salvation. Listen to what Paul writes at another time. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the results of works, so that no one may boast. Justification is a word that came out of the ancient Roman law court. It is a setting that the judge had the power, and even though he knew that someone might be guilty as charged, he had the power to pronounce the defendant innocent, pardoned if you will. So when Paul spoke of justification by grace through faith, the people understood this language and the imagery that he was using. They understood that it meant that the broken relationship with God had been restored by an act of free grace and forgiveness solely on God's part. And it is nothing that we can do or earn or say or be. In other words, just as the judge has the freedom to pardon the guilty defendant, God is free to forgive sin. The doctrine of justification not only changes our understanding of how we are connected with God, it also changes our relationship with God. It cannot be said enough. And so if you hear nothing else today, hear this. God's unconditional, constant love for you and for me and for all is free. It is freely given. It is a gift. You see, the honest truth is that we are and we will always be unworthy in and of ourselves. It's only because of God's love and goodness freely given to us that we are made right, that we are justified with God. And Paul says, as we know, this love is ultimately seen and manifested in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, which brings about reconciliation between God and God's people. In other words, in the words of the great theologian Moltmann, he wrote, the death of Jesus on the cross is the center of all Christian theology. All Christian statements about God, about creation, about sin and death have their focal point in the crucified Christ. Things are made right, justified between us and God, not because of our love for God, but because of God's love for us. Don't you remember that little children's song? You know what I'm thinking of? 
Oh, who grew up in the church? Raise your hand if you... Jane Longino, you should know this. What's that word? What's that little song we always sang when we grew up in the church? Jesus loves me and God loves me because God, I love God because God loved us first. Did you not sing that growing up? I, okay, I'm Southern. We did that in the Southern church. We love because God first loved us. We love because God first loved us. It's not what we do for God, but what God does for us and what God has done for us. It is not what we give. It is what we receive. As you know, one of my favorite, my only really comic strip that I kind of read now and then is Peanuts. I love peanuts. I don't know if you've read, have, I've told you this one before or not, but it's so good that I have to use it again because it illustrates to the point of what I want to say. It's with Linus and his sister Lucy, and Lucy says to Linus, you see that building over there? That's the library. If you ever want to borrow a book, all you have to do is go in there and tell them which book you want to borrow, and they will let you take it home for free. Free? Says Linus. Lucy replies, yes, absolutely free. Doesn't it sort of make you wonder what they're up to? Says Linus. Now think about it. It's true. We don't like, I hear people all the time to me, ah, they're getting freebies. We don't like that people get free things. We like it better when people earn it or deserve it. I was told very early on, if you really want to stretch a point and make people come to something, you charge them a little because they think it's more important if they have to pay for it. Maybe that's why justification by grace through faith puts us in a situation that we're uncomfortable with. It's free. We can't earn it. We can't work for it. It's given to us as a gift. And it's only because of God's action, because of God's love, because of God's grace and mercy that we are justified, that we are in relationship. Not our good works or our faith, but God alone does this for us. I love this statement that I read in one of the commentaries. It says, and it's talking about Jesus. I think you'll get this. It says, God has graced us with God's creative, sustaining, and fulfilling love. Creating, sustaining, and fulfilling love. You see, faith is our ability to accept God's abundant, unconditional, freely given Love and grace and mercy. And when we do this, what does Paul tell us what we will have? We will have peace. Peace with God is exactly what it says. We will be at peace with God. Now let me be clear, because it doesn't mean that we won't be confused or have this always feel good about life. It doesn't mean that everything is going to go just the way we want it. It doesn't mean that we'll have all our desires. It doesn't mean that there'll be full smooth sailing. It doesn't mean that we won't get angry and disturbed. What it means is this peace allows for a genuine, authentic relation with God that allows us to be in communion with God. I'm going to skip a part and go right to the end because it's another story. And it, it illustrates what this piece is like. It's a rabbinic story. 
It's about a child who tried to free from God, specifically refused to study the Talmud. His parents, in desperation, called in the rabbi. The day the rabbi was to come, the child cowered in terror. He heard the heavy boots on the steps. Can you imagine a big man coming in? When the parents opened the door, a voice roared, Where is this child that refuses to study my law? The parents themselves, a little bit intimidated, shrink back. The rabbi says, get out, leave me with this child. This huge bearded man comes and looms over this shivering child. And then he picks the boy up, sits down in a chair, and hugs him. and hugs him, and hugs him. And the boy calms down, and his terror goes away. About an hour he does this, and it's the most peaceful hour of the young boy's life. When the parents hesitantly knocked on the door, The rabbi sets the child down, looks into the eye of the little boy, and gives him a big wink. And then he yells, come in, now the child will study. What a wonderful image of God's love and God's peace. Imagine yourself as that little child. Imagine God just surrounding you with his arms. Imagine the rhythm of your heart beating to the pattern of your breathing as one. Perhaps this is the peace that is talked about a peace that passes all understanding. Friends, the incredible power of God's love is made known through us to the reconciling compassion embodied in the risen Christ. If you hear nothing else, know this. You are loved today, tomorrow, forever, for who you are, not because you earned it or deserved it, but because of God. God loved you first and will always love you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, what many and abundant and awesome gifts you give to us. Gifts we can understand on a very simple level and gifts that we can completely miss at times. And so as we gather here on this day that is a gift of celebration of love for each other and for you, for the spirit that empowers us and the sun that come to us, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for the moments that your mysterious presence awakens us. We give you thanks for the moments of a gentle smile that calms us. We give you thanks for the moments that a fear is dispensed and our heart is overflowing with your love. May your grace and mercy and peace sustain us. Amen. I invite